Have you ever woken up and thought to yourself, I want to enslave the souls of countless creatures and use them as an army where they die and get resurrected over and over again in an infinite loop of death for all eternity? No, me neither, because that would be a very weird way to wake up. But in case you did, today's your lucky day, because I will try to answer the question, can you beat Skyrim using only necromancy? And the rules are pretty obvious and straightforward. Only damage with necromancy, everything else is prohibited. And my goal is to slay Alduin using a massive undead army. I will be playing it on the hardest difficulty, Legendary, which makes me damage 75% less and enemies do a whopping 300% damage. As you probably guessed, it's utterly painful. With all that said, Leaving a like and subscribing would be a huge help, so grab a snack, sit back and enjoy the video. We started, once again, by being slowly dragged to our death, then decide we are not meant for the modern age and become a Neanderthal, ironically called Neanderthalius. Then we get put on a chopping block and as the absolute ancestor we are, we finally start to see the light after 40,000 years. Yes, it's actually 40,000 years. And just as we embrace the eternal slumber, a dragon interrupts our beheading and we evade death once again, get up on our feet and run out of the burning ruins called Helgen as fast as we can. Because we made a Breton, we are extremely short compared to everybody, but we have the Summon Familiar spell, which spawns a little wolf to fight for us. Unfortunately, it hits as hard as an angry toddler, so it's nearly useless, but either way, we make it outside. At Riverwood, we sell everything we just robbed from literal dead people and made a ton of cash. We then travel to Whiterun, then to Dragon's Reach, and inside we decide to install a mod that makes everything a little more enjoyable. It's called Ordinator, and basically revamps all perk trees to replace the normal boring perks with new, actually really fun and unique ones. We then find a perk we instantly get interested in, the Bone Collector perk. And this makes 4 altars on the map where you can summon an almost permanent skeleton warrior by looting corpses of dead people to collect one of every human bone. So not only do we rob dead people, now we also strip them of their bones, make their souls fight for us and use their bones to fight for us as well. We then tell the Jarl the usual things about the dragon, my near death experience and how I magically gained consciousness in a cart and he didn't really react to the last story. Instead, his court wizard sent me to Bleak Falls Barrow, almost like I didn't just have multiple near-death experiences five minutes ago. And before leaving, I bought a spell to summon a burning floating fire lady to shoot fireballs at my enemies, and then get the most important weapon of the whole run. It was located just outside White Run on a little hill and on the hill were a strange looking dog that looked just like my grandma's dog, and a person who had nothing better to do than stand all their life by a rock. After murdering the person, we went to the rock that was actually a standing stone, called the Ritual Stone, and this big rock here is my main weapon for the rest of the run. It works by first killing a creature, it could be a wolf, a man, or a giant, and then just using the power granted by the Ritual Stone to resurrect every dead creature close to me. And this is really overpowered because when the power runs out, the creature just dies again like normal and I wait 24 hours and boom, I can spawn them once again. So on my way to Bleak Falls Barrow, I tried to get my giant up the mountain, but it was really slow. And you see that blue ghost right there? Yeah, I found his spell on the little hill before too, and with this guy, 
the amount of magicka I have determines his strength. So as you can guess later, in the game when I have a boatload of magicka, he gets almost unkillable, which you're gonna see soon enough. At the dungeon, we killed bandit by bandit while seeing them think they drew their final breath, just to bring back their souls two seconds later and making them fight their friends against their will. Slowly our army grew of little weak bandits and rats, which kind of reminded me of chess, if all of the pawns were the suffering souls of bandits and they also could attack multiple at a time with swords and they had to fight a huge spider, so actually nothing like chess at all. But then we added the spider to our team, but he didn't fit through the corridor. And then we made the pawns fight some ancient seniors, where they kept dying and almost lost the battle. And then added the drog to our growing army, just for them to get destroyed by a swinging wall, over and over and over again and then chopped to pieces by swinging axes, which I didn't realize I could turn off. While slowly growing our army, we made it to the Drog Overlord bus thing room and fought him, where he died after a few seconds. We then took the tablet from the Drog because mom said it was my turn with the tablet and scurried out of the dungeon. Sadly though, we couldn't keep our hard-earned army and had to leave it behind. After arguing with mom, losing the argument, we were forced to give the tablet to Ferengar because he grew tired of magic and now wanted to play Roblox on his tablet. And now I had to go fight a dragon because it was attacking the city and they didn't have enough voluntary guards, so they just sent me out with them and hoped for the best. Of course, being the strong, handsome man I am, I hid behind a rock, summoning my little blue ghost man and waiting for the dragon to murder a guard, which we then resurrected and told him, you're not done fighting this dragon, not even death stops you. And he rushed in with new gain strength, just to be completely teared apart by the dragon once again. With the dragon dead, we absorbed its soul too, sadly making it unable to be resurrected, which made me sad because I really wanted a big pile of bones to follow me around. We then bought a spell, modernly known as alcohol, because it makes people fight and kill each other for no reason, and makes you a way better driver too. Using this spell we could kill almost everybody we wanted by making them go rogue. As long as we were hidden too, and the people of Whiterun must have eagle vision because we couldn't for the love of God find a hiding spot. After a while we managed to kill some and steal their bones. Sadly, each body only had like a right leg and a hand, making you wonder where the rest of their bones had gone. After committing multiple homicides and becoming a known serial killer, collecting a full skeleton in the process we made a little skeleton warrior called Fred or something like that. Then we went up the mountain, spit in the isolated dusty men's face by learning shouts they tried to learn for decades in just a few seconds. We then found the poor loveless elf known as Fandel in Riverwood and made him teach us how to shoot a bow which he still thought we needed after seeing we had no bow, no sword no real armor, no courage to fight for ourselves, our skeleton and our ghost guarding us like wolves guarding a little orphan baby left outside in the rain on the porch of its seventh foster family. Basically, I'm trying to say he isn't the brightest person in the world, as to why he just gave all the gold we spent on training right back to us again, leveling us up and getting a perk which makes us be able to summon more skeletons the more magicka we have. Then some cult members appeared and our skeleton didn't like them because of recent bad experiences with cults and rituals, but he got so scared that he exploded. So we had to summon him again 
and his friend from kindergarten, I think his name was Alfred, also joined us this time. We then set out for probably the second most important part of this whole run. It starts by traveling to Markarth, finding a dwarven ruin with some lady that wants to find a glowing blue piece of candy. And this ruin took a ridiculous amount of time, and I will spare you from that. So here's the ghost lady, and here's the blue candy number one, and here's blue candy number two, and here is blue candy number three, and to everybody's surprise, blue candy number four, which also took a goddamn while to get. And lastly, we open a ruin where nobody has been in 4,000 years, which is not that long considering my Neanderthal ass is around 40,000 years old. I have probably been here like 4 or 5 times already, but the ghost lady seems really excited about this. At the end we fight 8 billion robots that just kept coming and then a huge fire breathing transformer and no living creatures were here, so it was just my little ghost man and my two silly skeletons. But it died, and now we created the ethereal crown. And this thing, oh man it's crazy. So long story short, it gives two standing stones, and by having the crown equipped, using the ritual stone, then using another stone, the ritual stone gets kind of stored within the crown, which means every time I unequip and equip the crown, it refreshes the ritual stone ability. And this might seem really lame, but imagine this. I have an army of 5 bandits, I fight a robot, it kills all my bandits, oh no, what do I do? Normally I would wait to refresh the ability and resurrect the bandits, but waiting is not possible while in combat. But wait, we have the ethereal crown. So I just unequip and equip the crown, select the ability and boom. All my bandits are alive again, mid battle. So basically as long as I have at least one undead person, I can fight forever. Because he damages enemy, dies, gets alive again, damages enemy, dies, gets alive again, and then kills the enemy. Easy as that. Okay so now I for some reason decided to try and give the skeletons a glow up, but now they kinda just look very goofy. But I also added a reshader thing and now everything looks a bit better I think, I don't really know. But we headed towards Ustengraf to go find a horn for the isolated dusty men. And this time, we slowly gathered a fucking huge ass army and destroyed everything in our path. Until we came to the part with the fiery blocks that just burned all my life's work. Then we found Delphine's love letter and then met her and immediately rejected her. So as revenge, she set me up with a dragon fight, which of course we destroyed with our ghost and three skeleton men it is now. I'm looking at the recording right now and I cannot find where I created the third skeleton for the life of me, but it's here and we killed the dragon. We then wanted to become James Bond and infiltrate a secret Thalmor base and uncover hidden information, and by attacking the guards with our ghost, we slowly killed them while making them fight for us against the other guards. And after a bit, we have a huge army of strong elves and mages to kill everything. And we then got the secret information, killed the troll, got back to Delphine, told her about the information and an old man in the series named Esperin. We get sent to find Esperin. We go in the rift in Sirius, find the old crook, he tells us about the literal end of the world, we don't really care, we then murder and enslave everything like you normally do on the way out of the sewers, get the elderly man back to Delphine, they talk about a wall, and I don't give a shit because you can't kill a dragon known to eat worlds with a concrete wall. We go and search for the wall anyways. And we get to some forsworn camp where we kill so many people and enslave them while killing a dragon that I completely lost count of them and lost them all around the place. But now we are at the wall 
and it's just like expected, a concrete wall. But somehow Esbern reads the lines and like 20 million year old cave drawings on it to learn they used a shout to defeat Alduin. And to get that, we had to talk to the isolated dusty men's leader, an even more isolated and dusty man, a dragon at that. And it told us to find an Elder Scroll. And to get that, we robbed a mage in the middle of the ocean and went through a dwarven ruin, actually one we just cleared a couple hours ago to get a glowing blue piece of candy, and my expectations of the ruin still being littered with corpses was wrong, and the game decided to fuck me over and just spawn everything again, and it was painful. But we got through, got to the puzzle, stole the Elder Scroll, read it on the mountain, watched TV through our eyes, learned the shout, faced Eldun on that same exact mountain as in the I TV show, and for some reason I don't remember, we now summon Skiris out of our ass to fight for us. And oh yeah, you might wonder where those skeleton warriors went. Yeah, they didn't really like the I TV, I guess. After defeating Alduin, him then rejecting death, we figured we should trap a dragon and use him to find Alduin. So after buying a new fancy robe, attending a quick peace council with the war that is also happening, we called for the dragon and he somehow aligned all atoms twice on his first try to fly right through the two walls of Dragon Reach. And then he gets fooled and trapped by a huge, very obvious log. He snitches on Alduin, flies me to his hiding spot as well, scams me and makes me wander through a huge dungeon. Adding so many fucking drog to our army it was too funny. But then their AI was so shit they couldn't figure out to walk through a tomb. Just to mention, was made specifically for them. But after entering the next section, everybody teleported to me and our army was looking fantastic. We then get outside and our army wanted to fight the dragons, so after way too long, they killed two fucking dragons. And somehow our main target, the dragon priest, flew into the dungeon and all the way through the dungeon, we just fought our way through. So our army got split up and it was a mess and they started fighting each other. And then we just had one drog to fight the dragon priest. And oh yeah, the skeletons we spawned after they blew up weren't here either. After then killing the dragon priest, we tried to gather as many drog as possible. And they were laying like little scraps through the dungeon. And we got them all through, found some more on the roof, and went through the portal to Sovngarde. And look at that glorious army. My god, it's beautiful. With this army, we fought the man guarding the entrance to the Hall of Valor, and there were so many Drog, I completely missed them defeating him. Then we spoke with our three helpers to fight Alduin, went outside, gathered the rest of the Drog, and went to town on Alduin. There were so many Drog and so much happening, and it was chaos. We kept reviving them and deflecting Alduin's meteor breath, and they were so beautiful, my little minions. Just slashing away at the final boss Alduin, slowly chipping away his health, like a stone being formed into a beautiful sculpture. And with that, Alduin fucking exploded like the drama queen he is, and we celebrated it by looking at our army and a tall half-naked man. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen. After struggling with army's pathfinding, getting all fighting done for me, and stealing people's bones, I completed the challenge. So if you managed to enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe, and become a member to help out my channel. Also, remember to join my Discord channel via the link in the description. But that answers the question. Can you beat Skyrim using only Necromancy?